There's so much volatility on the markets despite what we're seeing in Asia this morning. What do you make of all of this? I mean, volatility, you know, volatility is driven specifically by sentiment. So when you've got markets that are behaving like it is at the moment because of just, you know, news that nobody quite, uncertain news, nobody quite knows where it's going to go, um, you've got volatility that spikes up and it obviously is, it goes part and parcel with markets that do what you've showed this morning. You know, some are down and some are up and some are, you know, and there's no real clear trend as far as markets are concerned. I think, I think the big issue is, if you look at markets at the moment, is you've got valuations, especially in the emerging market space, that are actually quite expensive. They're not cheap. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing that's driving volatility, I think, in the emerging market space. The second thing which is driving volatility, and this is obviously maybe the primary reason what that drives uh, volatility, is the fact that you've got, um, you've got the whole Korean Peninsula thing playing out. You've got Eurozone debt crisis playing itself out. You've continued to have American issues, you know, as far as debt and so on cons you know, is concerned, and CPI that continues to linger in the US, all of those issues continue to play. So you've got a uncertain world, and in an uncertain world, sentiment is negative, and negativity drives volatility up, and obviously drives markets, you know, in a in a in an uncharacteristically type way, either up or down on a continuous basis. In an uncertain world that we see it now, what should investors be focusing on? Well, you know, the best thing to do as an investor is to focus on the long term, to rather sit down today and say, what do I want to own? You know, as far as investor concerned, do I want to own some shares? And do I need to own some shares? And that's very important. And I think, as far as, as, as objective setting is, is concerned, is very important. You need to understand what you're trying to achieve, as far as an investor is concerned. And once you understand what you're trying to achieve, the next step that you take is to say, what asset classes do I want to own? And if you want to be in those asset classes, continue to own them for the long term rather than trying to buy and sell and buy and sell on the, on, the, on the short term. And that obviously has got to do again with the objective. You know, If your objective is to trade, well, obviously you want to buy and sell on a continuous basis. Looking from a valuation perspective, like I said to you, price to earnings ratios for the market continue to be quite high. We haven't seen earnings come through yet in the South African market. We're starting to see, you know, because American markets and obviously European companies uh, report, especially the multinationals, on a quarter on quarter basis, we started seeing a revision as far as those numbers are concerned. So, you know, certainly the valuation are starting to dip slightly in those markets but you're not seeing you know you, you're starting to see the infrastructural type issues and you're not seeing a turnaround as far as those issues are concerned and that's obviously what's spooking many investors but there are companies out there that are selling at, at, at good valuations you prepare to own them over long periods of time you will make money out of them because companies make money long term so at this stage you'd say cash is king well cash is not really king if you think about it because you know you've the yield that you're making across the globe and including here in South Africa is actually quite minimal you're not making money out of being in cash at the moment yes it's a safe haven as far as money is concerned also depending on which currency you choose but you know you're not really making any money for being in cash as a matter of fact beyond tax and beyond inflation you're probably slipping into a deficit as far as your returns are concerned the only way you're really going to make money is by being in equities and if you look at the yields that you're making on equities even relative to cash at the moment you know the yields are still very attractive relative to cash um, that's obviously despite the fact that it's up, you know, hugely over the last, you know, of, over the last 18 months or so. If we take a look at the changing face of economics right now, we've had the German government banning short selling last week. It's very much in Germany at this stage, but there's a fear that it could speak to spread to other Eurozone countries. We had the financial reform in the US, all to prevent another recession. Yeah, look, I think there's, there's huge governance issues that are going on uh, across G7, obviously excluding China in that situation. Um, you know, regulators are starting to, uh, trying, starting to ask questions, how do we regulate this thing? What, how do we get the best out of these out of, out of financial institutions? You know, we need in financial institutions to, to, to exist, and we need financial institutions as, as, as a country, but how do we... What, is, what do we do as far as regulation is concerned? And you're seeing a huge amount of lobbying happening. You're seeing a huge amount of, uh, um, uh, you know, papers coming out as far as what people believe should happen. So, and that pl will play itself out over the next decade. You know, we don't, we're not going to see anything that is, that, is, that is a firm commitment. And it's probably going to become more of a political issue than an economic issue. Because, because the, the taxpayer is going to start saying, well, how do I as an individual not pay for all of this, you know, in the future. Because that's in essence what's happening today. The taxpayer is paying for this. Now in the emerging market space, you don't have those situa situations. You've got governance that, are, that is happening. Yes, it's, um, in certain countries it's not as great as in other countries. South Africa is a great example where good governance happens. Um, and I think that, um, you know, emerging markets will continue to grow. And I think a decade from now, you're probably going to see emerging markets of a far more or a better footing. And that puts Africa on a better footing relative to its, its rich development 
that will top, top, top counterparts. All this volatility seems to be oversharing the positive numbers that are coming out in different markets. Yesterday out here in South Africa, GDP up 4.6% quarter quarter, better than expected from the 4.3 that was expected. Very much broad-based e recovery there. Yeah, and I think that's good news for the South African economy. You know, and it's also if you look at the numbers, it was both supply-driven and demand-driven. So it's not just you know, it's not just an isolated event as far as um, as, as as far as one sector that has contributed to, to GDP growth. Obviously, FIFA World Cup obviously is paying into into this whole thing at the moment. You've got um, you know, you've got a lead up to that, and you've obviously got GDP numbers that are coming out and substantiating what you're feeling as the lead up happens. And you might see a drop off as far as those numbers are concerned into third quarter and fourth quarter this year. You know, and then averaging. I think the, 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 the forecast for the, for the economy this year is about 3%. You know, the sad thing is, South Africa, we're only 3% growth. Okay, 3% is an anemic for this country. You know, 4% is anemic. You know, Trevor Manuel, when he was finance minister, was talking in the region of 6%. I'm going to argue and say we need 7 8 and 9%. You know, we need much more in order to get rid of the social ills in this country, which is its number one priority, in my opinion.